so today I would like to talk about I would like to talk about something actually it's different things that I read and uh, or that I heard in an interview and it made me think of something I I found on uh, YouTube uh, an interview which was made um, just after the release of Spirit of Eden when Marcolis is talking about uh, what he tried to put in this uh, album which was mainly uh, some texture in the arrangements but also in the same time he wanted to put the freedom, the spontaneity so he was explaining that usually uh, or you have spontaneity and freedom uh, or you have some texture in the arrangements but it has never been put together in the same music and that's what he wanted to do well, what, what we've tried to do is, is put together two things that don't normally exist on record that I've never actually seen exist anywhere on album before which, which always for me you, you, have, you have these two areas of music which, which sit apart from each other one, one is this thing which just sort of spontaneity and freedom and the other thing is, is this thing of having a, a very textured depth of arrangement and what we've tried to do with this album is just bring these two things together for, for once. I found that interesting because the the spontaneity, the freedom in art it's something that you are going to find a lot in children drawings for example some artists manage to be spontaneous but it's not obvious that's why when i paint on my canvas that's why i, I never do a, a, a draft or a, a sketch first on paper because i know that my first try is going to be the best so i prefer doing it directly on the canvas even if it's wrong but at least i think that if i get something good i prefer having it right away on the canvas the texture the texture it's something that um i like to have when i paint for home decor for example i like to put different layers layers on layers to have different effects and i think that's what he wanted to do on the music as well uh, that's basically what he did on his last uh, three albums if i understood well when i say last three albums it's i mean a spirit of eden uh, laughing stock and the Marcolis solo album because he worked exactly like that he was asking the musicians or himself or Tim Freeze Green to come and play with freedom whatever they wanted of course there was a guide for the song uh, because the musician had to know what they were supposed to play but uh, um, nobody told them uh, how they had to play it so they had a complete freedom of playing whatever they wanted and then Marcolis and Tim Freeze Green and the engineer were taking only a small part of each uh, piece and putting it maybe where it was played but maybe somewhere else uh, what is really very interesting I, I don't think that he's the only one to do that but it, it's very special and you know the, the, that, that is why it takes so long because of the, the approach to making this album is one where everyone who comes and plays on this album is given absolute freedom has no direction at, at all in, in what they play we'll, we'll play maybe for days and then you just take a few seconds and then you assemble an arrangement from that so you end up with something which is very tightly constrained that everything within it that has been played is, is, is completely free and completely loose. So it makes me think, if I translate it in art, it makes me think of a collage or of mosaic, you know, you take a small piece of something 
uh, for example, you, it can be something that you find in the street, on the ground. Uh, you take it, you glue it somewhere, and then you take a piece of, I don't know, uh, tiles uh, or a piece of porcelain, like, a, for example, a piece of a plate which would be broken. Sometimes you just have one flower of the plate and you use it for a specific a mosaic at a specific place and sometimes you may see the layers and the need for the collage it's going to be more textured because for the collage you can have several layers appearing on the surface for a mosaic it's the the texture is well you have the texture of the material but i mean you are not going to have different layers in any way that is not the subject i'm not going to do a technical uh, lesson of uh, mosaic right now but i mean uh, when uh, marcolis is talking about his way of working Automatically, I see the link with the um, fine art or with home decor because we have exactly the same thoughts, uh, the same um, wish to give some kind of richness, wealth to what we create. Uh, because if you just put a, a coat of paint and that's it, it's dull, it's not very interesting. It's always interesting uh, to guess things underneath. And in music, it, obviously, it's exactly the same thing because when you listen to Spirit of Eden or Laughing Stock or the Marcoli solo album, you it, it looks, um, how to say that? It looks very spontaneous and very simple, but actually there are a lot of things put in it and it's, sometimes it's not obvious, especially in the Marcolis solo album. I'm still listening to it deeply because there are things that I don't manage to understand or, or to understand how it was made and uh, I like to understand how the things are made. I... In the, I, I'm still in the Phil Brown uh, book here. Um, there are two things which uh, attracted my attention uh, and which gave me a lot of thoughts about it. So the first thing, I'm going to read it quickly. With Tim and Mark being such perfectionists, so yes, they are really perfectionists. That is something which fascinates me. With Tim and Mark being such perfectionists, each in his own way, it sometimes took hours, even days, to get a sound they were happy with. Once we took five days, five days, to get a guitar sound with Mark simply playing the same two chords over and over again at very high volume on the AC30 amplifier. He was trying to recreate a sound he had captured one night at his home. After a day or two, the guitarist <laughs> with a band that was mixing in, stu in uh, Studio 2, uh, Callum McCall, of the Bible, telephoned on the studio intercom to say he had learnt the part now and was willing to help out if we were having problems. Mark smiled wryly and went back to his, co his two chords and the job in hand, much to the dismay of the Wessex staff who said they were finding the noise difficult to take. No, we just, we just found ourselves in a really fortunate position, you see, from sort of like the the, 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 the success, if you like, and the support we were given from the It's My Life album. It's, it's just enabled us to make the colour of spring in, in, in this one you know, in, in, in increasingly more in our ideal terms. You know, the album's only ever been an important thing, and then it's just like now we find ourselves in a position where we don't have to... Do, do anything that we don't want to, and the only thing we do is what we do with them, which is make the record. So you imagine during five days, 
uh, Mark um, played these two chords again and again and again uh, to try to recreate a sound that he managed to reach while he was in his home. Uh, I would say that is absolutely the contrary of spontaneous or freedom because he wants to reach something and he that he did once and he doesn't manage to recreate it a second time actually i don't know if he managed to do it finally or to 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 reach this point but i think he wanted to get again this freshness this spontaneity that he got in his home and he wanted to to put it in in the recording but you see that is an example that the the demoing is always the best, gives always the best result. When you do something for the first time, it's always more fresh and more spontaneous and usually better than when you do it again. And it's valid not only for music, it's valid for my painting, it's valid for my videos. I never... Um, I prepare my videos but I never... Uh, talk in front of the camera uh, to train myself. I put the camera on and I go because I know that it's the first, the first try, which go which is going to be the most genuine and um, and interesting. Then when you start repeating yourself, you are not you don't look as convinced as originally. So of course it's the same in music. And that's probably why Marcolis was saying that we shouldn't try to do a second time or several times the same thing. That's probably why he was changing all the time for each album, because if you do the same thing on a, another album, it looks like you repeat yourself and you lose you lose the, the energy, the fun, the spontaneity, the um, enthusiasm that you have when you start something for the first time. How do you manage to avoid uh, not only duplication of the dreaded formula, but you've also managed to stay away from any prevailing trends of the time. Sure, so that's, that's just the consequence of taking so long to make these albums. I mean, it's quite hard to be a part of any trend if you're sort of two years between each album. But yeah. you wouldn't anyways, would you? No. I, I'm, I'm really trying to search a way to do my paintings differently uh, each time. Of course, there are there are technical matters. There are things we can do in painting because the materials, for example, we can't use something water-based above something oil-based, things like that, for example. So there are a few rules that we have to follow because otherwise it's not going to work. But I, I really would like to find a way to recreate my way of working on my canvas every time I'm doing a painting because I chiefly, chiefly don't want to get bored on my work even if the theme of the painting is different. Anyway, so I found this example interesting because it is absolutely the contrary of spontaneity and of freedom but in the same time I was very amazed by this this way of being perfectionist you know of insisting of to get something and and to not give up and to try again and again and again and even if it bothers everybody around even if you imagine five during five days hearing the same two chords very loud it was probably awful for the people around but when you create something you don't do it to be comfortable and to please the people around you do it because you try to reach what you want to do so uh, you can't 
take in consideration what other people think. It's a pity, but it's like that, you know. And the people were there to work on the project, so it's not like if they were forced to hear that. Uh, they took the risk of hearing something like that. I told the story to my mother this morning and she she used to oh well she used to be a singer, she's still a singer. And when I told her that she told me after one day I would be screaming in the studio if I was hearing the two same chords again and again. <laughs> Yeah, it was probably very hard to handle, but I really admire artists who know exactly what they want to do. That's something which fascinates me. I think that if I had been there in the studio, I would have been stunned and I would have watched him do that. And maybe I would have made a very fast drawing of him doing that. Maybe I would have taken photos. Well, no, he wouldn't have let me take pictures of him. But I would probably have wanted to capture the moment because that is something really. Ah, wish I was there. I love being in the recording studios, even if I don't play myself. I love watching that. Anyway, there is something else that I wanted to read you because that Phil Brown, at the end of Laughing Stock, he says something. The result was Tok Tok's fifth album, Laughing Stock. It was finished. It was stunning. It was not commercial, but instead had a dark Pink Floyd, Beach Boys, Phil, Don, 90s style. Curiously, despite all the time spent with every last musical and technical detail, the album sounded to me as fresh and spontaneous as five guys playing live in a room. I think, really, I think that is the 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 most great compliment that we can do to an album or to an artist because looking fresh in spite of the i don't know how many times uh, how much time they recorded and it was kind of crazy and uh, they were almost uh, they all had almost nervous breakdown and and in spite of that, the freshness was there, the spontaneity, the freedom was there. So it means that Marcolis managed to do and to convey exactly what he wanted, which is amazing. <sighs> For the painting, what Marcolis is doing, it, it's much more difficult because he had several musicians coming, so there was the spontaneity and the freshness coming from each person and the, their way of playing from each person. And then Marcolis gathers everything and gives uh, another result, which is his. Um, like... Um, like a tapestry, you know, of small elements that he he's sewing here and there. It's very artisanal, the, this way of doing. On, on all paint that you are alone to paint is different. Maybe if uh, several artists are painting a small piece of something, and if I was using these small pieces that I would glue on a canvas to recreate a, a whole thing, which would be the meaning of what I want to say, then maybe I would manage to reach something the equivalent, uh, something similar to what was made in music. Um, 
I'm always trying to find a parallel between painting and music because I want the painting to um, to translate what is said is in music. Anyway, my, my next painting is about tomorrow started and the spirit is completely different. It's uh, in tomorrow started. It's something very uh, dramatic and very uh, theater like very theatrical. I don't know if we say that something related to theater that's what i see you know what i'm i'm always in my thoughts about uh, cre the creation the inspiration the technique the um, the way of working the spirit the something that marcoli says also on the interview he says that it's not a, a question of technique, it's more a question of attitude. So we won't what we do, we just talk over any absolute basics and the fundamentals of what music should be, which is just in its attitude and not in its technique. I'm always very interested in these things. That's why I'm doing so many videos about Marcolis because I think that Every time I think I'm, and maybe I'm reaching a point where I understood the most, and every time I find something new and I understood nothing, I still have to learn. So I'm doing videos and videos and videos about Marcolis, and it may look strange, but there is so much to say. If I was doing so many videos about Mozart or Beethoven, nobody would find that weird. But here, because the artist, the composer is alive, it would be weird. No, it's not. There is so much to, to say about it. There is so much to study. There is so much to learn from it and from him. Uh, that I have to talk about it because I, I, I need to understand how it's done. I, I, I want to understand how it's done. It, it really interests me and I, I'm always hoping that I'm going to find people who are interested by the same thing. Uh, so far, um, I had some people who are interested by that, but I had this guy who contacted me and who uh, recommended me this book and he was right because it, it really interested me a lot. Uh, but a lot of people contact me to ask me uh, things related to Mark's uh, outfits or his hair or his sunglasses and I'm maybe going to repeat myself, but I don't know Mark Hollis. Uh, he's he's not a friend of mine. I I don't know why he has long hair or or short hair, or why he wore sunglasses or why he has a brown jacket. You know, I, and I don't think there is anything to answer about that anyway. I. Uh, that's not my point. My point is really the music um, and the and Marcoli's personality, a character, because he is really fascinating. He's really we have a genius, and we have we are lucky enough to live during a period where a genius is himself still alive. That is really a chance, an extraordinary chance. And even if we can't talk with him directly, we can talk about it and we can enjoy it now while he's still alive and while we are still alive. So I really would like to be able to exchange more with people who are interested in music or in creation or even in painting or even in technique, if you are only interested in the technical aspect of the music, it's good to please don't hesitate to react, to put comments, to send me messages if you want. Or if you are interested by my video, you can also subscribe and maybe at what, at what point you are going to want to say something. 
I'm craving for a musical conversation. Wish I could have it with Mark Hollis, if only. That kind of intensity does take time. Are you happy with the results? 